How's it going, everybody? Sam here. Finally, with another game that we're going to be moving on to. And this game is going to be called Soulstone Survivors. Uh, if you like the previous content with Nomad Survival, if you like games like Vampire Survivor, and any of the other similar games in that genre, you're really going to like this. This has been a fantastic playthrough. I wanted to make sure I had everything done before I started making videos on it, so I had a good understanding of everything. So let's just get right into it. Uh, as you can see, in comparison to a lot of the other games of this same genre, the graphics are, in my opinion, significantly different. Uh, I love the 8-bit stuff, but occasionally, it's really nice to play something that's 3D models. So, it's all 3D. It's going to be top-down, and it is a blast. So, getting into it, there's going to be five maps currently. The game is in early access still. They have a lot planned. They actually have a roadmap on their Steam page if you want to check that out. And it gives you a great idea of where they're going to be going. But currently, for the time being, there are five maps. In these five maps, there are seven difficulties that you could play on. And increasing the difficulty is just going to basically make the game harder for you. Similar concept as a lot of the other games. There is no, I would say, in my opinion, difference in difficulty between the different maps. There's different maps. Uh, there are more obstacles in some maps than others, which make some maps more annoying to play but for the most part they are just kind of coliseum arena type maps that all have the similar like gist to them it's not like you're going on to a second map and the second map is going to have 100 percent more hp or anything like that no all, all, all the values are the same the maps are just a different vibe for lack of better term as you go through it you can enable these curses from one to seven these curses do different things like increase hp increase the amount of mobs that are spawned they release unkillable mobs that one shot you if you get hit by them uh, a lot of really fun things another nice thing is that you actually are able to get additional materials depending on what level of difficulty you're playing on so the higher the difficulty the better the materials you'll get and we'll show you right here the bonuses that you'll get and these minor soul stones that's kind of like your main currency and the prestige is basically your experience for your characters going into the characters currently there are 14 available and six of these 14 characters have two weapons we'll go into the weapons in a second characters range from melee characters mages people with guns that's pretty cool they got a musket i actually really enjoy that there's like a bomb arch type in this game it's a fun time uh we have archers we got paladins we got dot damage builders a lot of really fun different mechanics that you can play and test and there's nothing saying that you can't play however you want on any of these characters but depending on the character you're playing you will have access to certain weapon abilities that you would not have access to unless otherwise told basically so it's a lot of fun these characters you can just level them up the top level that you need to get to is 60 there's not really anything past 60 except for additional like oh i'm the best so it'll change the star so like this guy's 112 he goes to blue um but past level 50 and 60 there's no additional like rewards for leveling up currently and all of these characters have different basically bonuses so this guy he's a melee character he's gonna have more health he has more crit movement speed stuff like that these skills you unlock as you level them up so as you get achievements say this was a fresh start you would just see un unknown here or locked you wouldn't see the names of these skills so as you level them up there's an incentive because you will get additional abilities moving on to the blacksmith this is where these weapons come into play so there's only six additional weapons out currently they have a ton prepared i think it was like over 200 that are going to be coming out eventually with the full release but basically you'll use materials that you get in the game to create new weapons so these weapons will change the weapon skill that you start out with and it also gives you some additional stats which can sometimes be negative also but for the most part it's just going to change your play style and kind of opens up a different start for a lot of the characters the first six are the only ones that have additional ones but i'm sure they will add a bunch more and i'm sure they're going to be adding rare unique legendary weapons further in the future because they implemented all of the materials a lot earlier i'm assuming it's just probably early like much easier to implement the materials because you're not game breaking anything here whereas if you released a legendary weapon that's insane the game might be a little bit too easy so all of the materials as far as i'm aware are in the game currently uh we have legendary we got our uniques our rares our uncommons and our commons but for the time being you're only using the uncommon and the commons don't worry about any of the other ones 
Moving on to runes. So runes, you're going to have a certain amount of runic power. You can increase this by getting achievements or purchasing it in the skill tree. And this is just going to give you additional like benefits, basically. If there's a specific way that you want to play, so for example, I'm playing the bow guy. I wanted to do additional damage based off the amount of types of damage I had applied. So like different negative effects like poison, burn, ice, stuff like that. I went this route because it causes extra damage per type of negative effect. I went this one so I take less damage and I don't get knocked back because there's a lot of knockback in this game. It's really funny. And then these are basically an easier way for you to get the correct skills that you're looking for. Each class has these runes as you can see. So like we have nature, we have holy, we have arcane, we got projectile. And as you level those classes up and complete those achievements, you will unlock these runes. The majority of these runes are like this. It just increases the chance that you'll find a certain type of weapon skill. This one, however, will add six random active skills of the type of whichever one you want that you would not otherwise have access to. So this is implying that there are certain weapon skills that you can only get if you are playing that character type. However, this rune allows you to get access to those skills. In the middle here, there's a couple other ones that do just kind of really fun things. These are the two legendary ones, so there is different rarity of runes. Um, but these ones in the middle are the ones that are not class related. They just like do crit stuff, additional dashes, you start with an extra weapon, that kind of stuff. We won't go into it too much, but basically it just makes the game more enjoyable. Moving on to the skill tree, this is pretty similar to most other games of this type, or just a skill tree in general. You'll be able to purchase upgrades for your character, which are going to increase the damage, the defense, EXP pickup, stuff like that. And you're going to do that with these things called soul stones. So soul stones are your primary currency, like I said earlier. You get these minor soul stones by defeating small enemies. Really easy to collect them. As you can tell, I have 4 million. It probably took me maybe a day to get all of these unlocked. It is not super bad, I promise. The only thing that might be a little pain is getting these larger soul stones. So these soul stones are the ones that drop from the bosses. So if you kill the boss, you're going to be able to get these soul stones. And that's how you purchase the majority of like the second half of these upgrades. The first ones are normally just with the minor ones, but most of them are from killing the bosses. The last thing on here that's important is this increases your runic power. So this is one of the ways that you can increase your runic power. The other is through achievements, which there's a lot of achievements in this game. Uh, the two that I currently don't have is just killing the amount of enemies. I have not killed 300,000 enemies yet, but other than that, pretty straightforward. It's really nice because through these achievements, you unlock things like additional weapon skills. You unlock additional runes. And so it kind of incentivizes you to actually do the achievements because it will help you in the game. But you don't have to go out of your way to do the achievements. The only one I would say I went out of my way to do was these two, which is to complete the match in eight and nine minutes. And that's because there is a certain way to do that one. Other than that, you can just get these achievements by playing whatever character you want, leveling them up, beating the map in a certain amount of time, and just having a really, really fun time. The last thing I want to do is kind of just hop into the game here and show you guys what the UI looks like. So we'll just play on this map. This is going to be with the highest curses, so it'll be a fun time. It's going to be a little hectic, and there's going to be some additional things that you don't have to worry about, but we'll just pause for a second we'll talk about the ui so bottom right corner you're going to see the runes that you currently have active so if you have any questions maybe you forgot what you had on you can check down here you're going to have all of your character attributes over here i think this is one of the nicest character attribute screens i've ever seen mostly because it actually goes into explaining what these attributes do for you so sometimes there's games that don't really go into it it's like oh it increases attack power but Specifically, what does that mean? And this is, it's just a really, really nice, really, really nice understanding. Uh, I love it here. You can check whatever percentages you're at. So if say you're going to crit build, you can take a look here, see what your crit, your crit chance percent is at. You don't have to question it. So once you get hundred percent, you could just hang out, not worry about it. Stuff like that. It's very, very, very nice. In the middle here is going to be your HP. Different characters have different HP amounts. You're also able to increase that in game. These six squares here, these are going to be your weapon skill slots. So you can have six active weapon skills at a time. You have your dash skill right here. Every single character has a dash. Just depending on what character you are playing, you might have more dashes than other characters. On the right side here, this is called death protection. Similar concept in a lot of other games. Basically, 
on the skill tree, you can buy this, and you can get two of them tops. But it basically just saves you from a one-hit KO. If you were to die, it'll bring you back up to 50% HP. Super straightforward, super nice. Down here is going to be your EXP bar. It just goes up. It'll tell you your level in the bottom left corner. And then over here on the left side, we'll go over that in a little bit, just because it doesn't really explain itself until you get some passive skills and some active skills. Over here, you have Time Alive, your curse intensity. So this will tell you what all of the curses do, basically. So the enemy health is up, damage, attack speed, etc., etc., And it'll tell you all the bonuses that you have. And then right here is going to be your objectives. Currently right now, it says Eliminate the Lords of the Void, 0 of 20. Normally when you get into the game, it's just going to say 0 of 5. You only have to kill 20 when you're playing on the highest curse level. So don't stress too much about that if you're just getting into the game. And then below this, there's going to be one that says Eliminate. X amount of enemies to spawn these Lords of the Void. So we'll get into it real quick. I just want to show you what the passive and active weapon skills kind of look like. So in the beginning, you know, you got your OG generic goblin. It's a fun time. We got some meteors falling from the sky. That's a curse. Just says whenever you kill an enemy, there's a certain percent chance of meteors falling from the sky. And then we have the unkillable demon king right here in the middle where uh, I can't actually damage him. And if any of his abilities actually hit me, I will die. So that is one of the later curse things. You don't have to worry about that until curse five, I think. But it's just one of those really funny things that I enjoy about this game. So getting into the skill tree and the uh, level up, what it looks like. So far right side, skill points. It says you have one skill point. I'm assuming later on they are going to have it to where you can pass maybe. But uh, as far as I'm aware, you have to pick a skill every single time you level up. So this will never be larger than one. In regards to rerolls and banishes, so rerolls, pretty generic. You click reroll, gives you some new options. Banish, you can choose to banish one of the five or one of the three options. As far as I'm aware, it only gets rid of it for this level up in particular. If I were to level up again, there's a chance for me to see that. I've just run into that personally where I banish something. And I see it again later on. So I do not think it is a permanent effect. I think it's just for, say, you don't have any rerolls and you really just don't like any of them. You could just banish the one you like the least and hope for a better thing. But moving on. So we didn't get a weapon skill. The first level, you're always going to have a passive. So these are the passives. Here's a couple of them. We have two dot passives and then generic movement speed one. So there's also, as you could tell, different rarities to these upgrades. So... The dots, those are never going to change. That's why they're white. But you're never going to see a Fateful Strikes that is purple, for example, that applies more than 20% of Doom. Doom is a dot effect here in this game. And the nice thing is that it'll tell you exactly what it does. Another thing, they, they do a great job of explaining what all the abilities do. And I really respect that because I think that is the biggest problem with a lot of these games. They just don't tell you. And I know it's like, oh, you can figure it out yourself. But why would I want to do that? I just want to know what it does. It's nice. So we're, we're going to pick up, uh, let's see, we'll just go with this one. And uh, your second level is always going to be an active. So we'll level up one more time before the elite mob spawn here. And hopefully we'll get a nice skill. Because sometimes you won't get anything crazy and it'll just turn into like dodging simulator. So one of the nice things, again, that I enjoy about this game is that as you can see on the bottom of these skills, there's a thing called skill type. So skill type is going to be huge in this game. And if you can see in my current skills, you can see that my weapon skills highlighted currently. And it says four types. That means there's four types of skill types on this ability that I'm hovering right now that are same on mine. So there are passives that will upgrade. Let's say, let's see. So this is a projectile, missile, frontal, burst, physical. So this is also a projectile. So if there is a passive that says, let's upgrade 25% damage of all uh, projectile type weapon skills, that'll hit all of them. So if you're trying to build a specific type of character, say you do like six projectiles or something, you want to know that they have this in common. That way you're able to level them up all at the same time. Because it is important to level up your weapon skills. If you can see here on the bottom, it says level one. As you upgrade them, it makes the cooldown time go down to cast it. It also makes the damage go up for both the dot and the just generic damage. So we got elite mob spawning. So you'll see these guys are highlighted yellow and they're a lot bigger. They're a lot faster. These guys don't have an actual skill, but the majority of the 
characters that are elite mobs have a castable skill that put that little red circle on the bottom. So th those red circles, those are all enemy abilities that you're going to want to dodge. You don't really get hit by those. Um, if you do, you'll take damage. It's not a lot, but sometimes it's a ton. So here's a great example of the different rare, like rarity types. So here's an uncommon, here's a rare power. It'll tell you. Obviously, the higher it is, the better the stats are going to be. So that's the really, really nice thing. And as you can see, I have three skill points now because I just still can't get any additional weapon skills. There we go. So again, just same concept. It'll tell you the skill type, it'll tell the cooldown, the type of dot damage that it does, if it does do dot damage, which a majority of these do dot damage. That's the really nice thing. Dot damage is huge. We're going to be killing bosses that have tens of millions of HP. So dot is going to be really, really important. Crit is great. But you'll see that crit damage does not scale as high as dot damage does because you can get like 2,000 stacks of dot on a boss at a time. It's absolutely insane. So I'm going to go ahead. We're going to skip to when the bosses spawn and then I'll show you guys what the bosses look like and then that's going to be where we're going to stop for the day. One of the nice things about this game also is as you can see my skill slots are full. At any time when you are offered new weapon skills you can change these. So you're not stuck in the six weapon skills like the first six ones that you get. You are able to replace them later on. The second nice thing is if I were to pick one of these weapon skills, I would be able to get a weapon skill that is of average level of what all of mine are. So say I have a bunch of level eights and nines of my weapon skills and I want to change them out for whatever reason. You don't get a level one weapon skill because that would really hinder you. You actually get one that's around the same level as the ones that you have currently. The other nice thing is if you see, you know, you have these weapon skills, you don't really like any of them. They have this option down here where you can replace your choices with passives. And that way you're not just forced to pick up a weapon skill that you don't really like. You don't have to waste a reroll or anything like that. You can just pick a nice new passive. Uh, that, that's probably one of the things I like the most about this game is that the quality of life is really, really high. You might argue that uh, that makes the game too easy or too simple. But I'll probably say that I died more in this game than I have any of the other ones. Um, maybe it's because of some BS, but you just get knocked around in this game, I have to say. So as you can see, the bosses just spawned. I hit 400 mobs. There are four mobs that spawn at the same time when you're playing on the highest curse level. If you're playing, you know, first map, first curse level, no curses or anything like that, there's only going to be one boss that spawns. They're also only going to have like... 14,000 HP. These guys have all around 400k when they spawn. So, depending on the difficulty, more HP, more bosses. But for the most part, it's not too bad. I'll try and get some status effects on them so you guys can kind of see what that looks like. So, it's a lot easier to see on the bosses. Up here is going to be all the status effects that you have on them currently. So, this guy, for example, he has 54 stacks of slow, 21 stacks of frailty, which basically. They just take increased damage. Uh, 66 stacks of poison. We got doom. We got bleed, and we have shadow. So there's a there's a variety of dots that you can apply on them and status effects that you can apply on them. I mean, there's like probably like close to 15 because there's like synergistic ones. So like say you burn someone and slow someone at the same time. There's some additional ones that you can get through that. It's really really nice. So dots huge. You can always keep track of what you have up here. There are certain ones like doom where doom if you read it says it causes 50 damage after five seconds this is just the base one by the way um and it is increased with new applications and the duration is refreshed so the doom stacks will stay on there as long as you're applying new doom stacks if doom accumulates more damage than the target has health it will instantly execute the target so let's say you know something has this is for sake of easy easy explanation say something has 100 hp and your doom is doing let's say five damage a stack and it has 100 HP. So if we get 20 stacks of Doom, which equals 100 damage of Doom, it'll just instantly execute it. You don't have to wait for the damage over time. So it's really fun to have like a 3 million HP boss and you have like 2,000 stacks of Doom on it or something doing a ton of damage and they just all of a sudden just disappear because the Doom stacks kill them. So it's really nice. The last thing I want to show you guys in this bottom left corner is this is where all your passives and your actives are going to be held. So this, for example, is Frailty. So it increases a 10% chance of applying it and it increases all damage received. You can see that I have three of those. So I have a 30% chance of applying fragility to the target. 
I think that's really, really nice. It tells you how many of each different thing that you have. This is a great place to keep track of it. I will say occasionally, if my mouse is over here and you're not on the pause screen, right? So let's see if I could just avoid some damage real quick. So see, if I put my mouse down here to aim in this bottom left corner, it'll still pop up even if I'm not in the pause screen. That can be a little kind of annoying, but well, the nice thing about this game is you don't really have to aim like far or anything. The skill is always going to go to the farthest distance unless it hits an enemy. So you can just aim close to your body. You don't have to worry about like aiming all the way over here to hit an enemy or something like that. For the most part, you don't have to worry about it. So I think that is super nice. So let me see if I can kill a boss right here and basically show you what the giant soul stones look like. Would have been easier on like you know, first one, but oh well, we'll deal with it. You'll see that this kind of turns into a lot of dashing simulator. Um, one of the nice things about the dashes in this game is that your dashes all refund at the same exact time. So if you just time your dashes reasonably well, you are able to basically have all of your dashes up off cooldown at the same time and then never have to stop dashing. There is a passive that increases the amount of dashes that you have in the store. And the nice thing is that once you have four, you're, you're, you're golden. You are golden. I really stacked the bosses really poorly right here. So, unfortunately, they're on the same place, but hopefully they will just die all at the same time as well. Different bosses have different abilities. There's, like, Fire Titans, there's Acid Titans, Ice Titans, and they all leave different things on the map, so they're all annoying in their own sense. The Poison, the Ice, and the Fire definitely be most frustrating because they just leave these dots all over the map. And uh, you do have iframes while you're do like dodging, but if you stop even for like half a millisecond, you do take damage. So I have to say, you want to just try and get rid of those guys as fast as possible if the poison ones are around. But for the most part, you just dash all over the place, keep a nice little circle. We just got one more left. Probably die here. So, oh, oops. I'll take this. Okay, so hard to see because it's a little blurry. There's a giant stone right here. That's the soul stone. You just have to walk through them to collect them. And if you don't do that, at the end of the game, it's going to collect them all for you anyways. Uh, when you collect those, it brings all of the EXP drops. Oh, here's a good one. When you collect them, it brings all of the EXP drops that are on the map currently to you. So say you're playing in like one spot, right? Or it's not really easy for you to pick up the EXP. You can just run through one of these and it'll pick everything up for you. It makes your life a lot easier, less dangerous. So I like to leave one on the map and stuff like that. And uh, these are the big currency for your skill tree. So you always want to make sure you're picking those up. For the most part, that's everything, guys. I think if you're interested in Nomad Survival, you're really going to like this game also. I would totally recommend picking it up. I'm not 100% sure if it is on sale on the Steam sale, but it is just $10. So it's really not that bad for I think the quality of game that it is plus what it is going to be because this is I would say about 30% of the game completed and so I'm really excited about what it's going to look like when they have all of those weapon skills there's there's like 130 weapon skills out and there's going to be like 200 something 300 something can't remember it's on the roadmap though but I, I'm really excited for this game so I'm going to be making a lot of videos for this game I hope you guys pick it up I hope you have a good time with it and as always I hope to see you on the next one